pleasure to be presenting this paper. As the chair has already revealed, I'm the presenter. We've got Taba, she's seated there. We've got Safara seated there. So they are all ready for the tough questions which we'll be posting after this presentation. Feel free to do exactly that. The, title, uh, the topic of our presentation is Managing the Untouchability of Current Public Limpopo Secondary School Learners. We are from Limpopo Province. And we'll have to begin by stating that in Limpopo province we're experiencing something very peculiar. In the sense that one, there are learners who have turned unteachable. That is why we authored a paper on this. Then presentation outline, that is clear, background of the presentation, name of the study, you are able to see all of this. We'll be presenting this paper on the basis of this. Background. Presenters as institutional managers for more than a decade. May we reveal that as, pre, as presenters and co-presenters, we have been institutional managers for more than a decade. This trend, this challenge was not there. But as we are speaking now, it is, it is raising its ugly head. Presenters as proponents of great teaching. Fine. One reality which we cannot run away from is the fact that learners, especially secondary school learners, are no longer teachable. This is something which requires to be managed. And one of the ways of doing that is to expose, is, is to expose secondary school learners to great teaching. Again, we are prom, uh, proponents of heterogeneity in the classroom. One of the serious mistakes which current secondary school educators are committing is to treat learners as homogeneous group in a classroom. And according to us as authors of this paper, we regard this to be somehow a sin in the sense that learners are naturally heterogeneous. And even in the classroom, they need to be taught in that fashion. Teaching factory versus learning powerhouse. Fine. There is a great argument that these days, the majority of schools still operate as if they are teaching factories, when in fact have to, they have to be uh, learning powerhouses. What it simply means is no presentation of a lesson which is not invoking learner participation, does it? Preferential teaching style versus learning, uh, learner's learning style. Fine. This is based on the fact that these days with the crop of uh, learners we've got, especially in secondary schools, there is a need that they are not taught according to a teacher's preferential teaching style but according to their own learning style. In other words, every classroom educator has to make sure that he understands how learners learn so that he adapts and adjusts his lesson to how they learn. With that, then this challenge of unteachability is likely to be greatly lessened and finally uh, obliterated. Let's get to the aim of the study. This study aims at interrogating what instigates anti-schooling inclination. When we declare that learners are, are unteachable, indirectly we are saying that they are anti-schooling. They are declaring themselves these scholars. And one thing for sure is that learners cannot just wake up and begin to be unteachable. There must be something that, that is orchestrating that. That is why the aim of the study centers around investigating what instigates this unteachability. Theoretical framework. Don't forget, colleagues, this is an academic paper. That is why there was a need that we share with you the theoretical framework that underpins this study. This study has been underpinned by the learning organization philosophy. We take it that colleagues are slightly having a clue about this kind of a philosophy. It is saying currently all schools have to be involved in learning. Not only learners, even teaching staff, non-teaching staff, everybody at the school has to operate within the mode of a learning organization philosophy. This is one philosophy which is, which is being propagated in order to get, all of our, to get all of us in the school to be lifelong learners, not only learners. You have just heard yesterday that there is no way in which you can encourage learners to, to involve themselves in great learning. When you yourself as an educator, you are not involved in that. As educators, we need to lead by examples. The research design and methodology, fine. This study has been conducted under the qualitative research approach. This is an approach which in our, which in our own opinion is in line with the learning organization philosophy. And furthermore, 
this learning organization philosophy and qualitative research approach together they make a good synergy and another reason why we chose a why this study is qualitative in nature is one because of the nature of the research problem as well as the aim don't forget colleagues the aim was to interrogate what instigates or orchestrates unteachability sampling and data collection there's a, the study centered around one circuit in Limpopo province. That circuit is made up of 13 secondary schools, out of which three secondary schools were sampled. And the kind of sampling we resorted to, obviously, is a convenient, purposeful sampling. That is the sampling which we utilize in order that we study those schools intensively and extensively to ultimately merge with findings which are be, uh, believable. Data or data analysis after data was collected when analyzing those data we utilize content analysis this simply means that we concentrated on the responses secured from the research respondents and we concentrated on the, their validity and essence generation of themes using categories obviously out of those responses responses themes were created which we ultimately applied to author a research report or author discuss research findings then finally we applied constant comparative method we know colleagues should have been exposed to this but briefly constant comparative method is a kind of data analysis approach approaches which focuses on comparing the responses for for instance in every secondary school there was an educator who was interviewed a parent who was interviewed and elena who was interviewed in relation to the question of unteachability we could take the responses of teachers and try to compare in order to establish similarities or dissimilarity. With this kind of approach, it was easy to do exactly what we are sharing with you. Fine. Uh, we love to utilize much of our presentation time talking about the findings we merged with. One of the findings was loss of confidence and faith. One. One of the reasons why most of secondary school learners in Limpopo are unteachable is because, one, they are no longer having confidence and faith in themselves and even in schooling itself. This is very interesting. It is as if these days, as long as learners don't see the value of schooling, then it becomes difficult for you as an educator to teach them. It doesn't matter how excellent you could be with your lesson delivery. You will be delivering that excellent lesson maybe to 50 learners only to be heard by two having 48 learners not hearing or figuring out exactly what you are doing there's a, a, another finding was insufficient that dispense knowledge one we noticed that most of the learners appear not to be clear about what schools have been established for you are all aware colleagues that schools have been established to dispense knowledge and that knowledge has to has to land on learners but how will it land on learners when they are not teachable when they resist and resent that as a result the knowledge that the school dispenses it it lands in vain or it it ultimately evaporates number three inability to expand frontiers of educational prosperity one of the reasons why learners have to be taught in the classroom is so that they are able to expand their educational prosperity they must prosper educational but once again, how will they pro prosper educationally when they resist and revolt against schooling and education? Then another finding accustomed to anti-ability and resistance to rehabilitation. Fine. What, what, one of our observations when conducting these studies is that it is as if some learners in our province have been conditioned to failure to, the, to an extent that whenever they have to be rehabilitated in the form of being used to succeeding it became difficult for that colleagues you should be aware that if a learner uh, does a grade more than twice somehow you are conditioning that learner to fail and ultimately that learner will settle on that but in an event where there is no grade repetition with regard to learners somehow you are, you are conditioning them to success they will make sure that with every grade they are doing, they do it once and that's it. So it was difficult with, the, with some of the secondary school learners because they've been doing grade 12, to be specific, more than even uh, twice. Let's, yeah, let's quickly get to the major recommendations. One of the recommendations was suggested is that we need to reinstill confidence and faith in these learners. In other words, we need to make sure that as part of teaching learners for them to succeed, we need to bring back the confidence which they once had. 
Secondly, emphasize what schools exist for. We have already explained that. Number three, decondition learners to embrace schooling. As long as learners resist uh, teaching, somehow, somehow they will be anti-schooling and they require to be, in other words, they require to be deconditioned. That condition has to be removed out of them so that they begin to love schooling. We would love to get to, to the, last, uh, the last recommendation, eradicating the martyrdom myth. Fine. We, we noticed that some learners were resisting teaching because according to them it was a sign of being a martyr, a star. In a classroom, we find that this learner is misbehaving, is ill-disciplined, and other learners appreciate to have that kind of a learner, thinking that the learner is on the path, when in fact he's on the road of doom. Then concluding remarks, as part of concluding remarks, we suggest that there is absolute need that the classroom, there be a harmonious classroom relation between learners and teachers, so that educators are able to do what they are appointed for. Secondly, all educators, especially in secondary school, they require three things. They need to be patient with those kind of learners. They also need to, be, to have passion for the job they are doing. Finally, all educators, if needs be, need to be obsessed about the success of that, that, those learners. You can never teach me and succeed if you don't indicate that you are obsessed about my success. And don't forget, learners are good at reading an educator they are with. They'll always know that this educator cares less about us. Why should we care more about him or her? Thank you so much, Chair.